So one of the things that we tend to treat or over treat is fever and fever is not an illness in itself. It's the body's response to illness. It is a good thing. Yes, fever, if um, left untreated to some extent can cause convulsions and other things. You can ask your health professional about it. But here in my home, we let fever go. To, the fever can run and we've had fever up to 103.6 here. We let fever go to 104 if it wants to because the fever itself is not the only thing we are looking at. We are looking at the overall well-being of the child. How is the child behaving? Is the child lethargic? Is the child, dis is, is, is the child extremely uncomfortable? Those are all things that has to be taken into consideration. Um, what we do is to make sure that the child is as comfortable as possible as their body fights what is going on. Um, before we learned about this, um, we knew more about using fever reducers. So what the fever reducer does is suppress the body while it's trying to, it's like somebody drowning, they're trying to come out of the water and someone comes and push them down thinking they are helping them. So we know here that we don't want to do that. We want the body to heal. And so one of the things we use to make sure the child is comfortable is water. We make sure that they are well hydrated. And so we add these minerals. We use concentrates. We add the minerals into the water. Um, there are other fluids that have electrolytes and one of it is coconut water. If you are in a climate where coconut is really, uh, uh, is readily available, like it's easy to get them, that that's a good source of coconut water. I do know that there are children that would not take anything when they are not feeling well. If you have a child who has gotten to that point of not wanting to take anything, then yeah, you need to take them in. They'll probably need to be given fluids because one of the dangers when a fever is running is when the child gets dehydrated because of the heat and there's no liquid going in, then it becomes really dangerous. And sometimes when we say take fluids or be um, avoid being dehydrated, people think it's just water. Um, if your water have minerals, then good, but you have to understand that um, the body does not just need plain water, it needs electrolytes. So that's one of the things to take into consideration. So what we do here with fever is just fluids. Fortunately for us, Isabel takes, when she's sick, one of the signs that she's sick is that she asks for water. She avoids food and asks for water. Every other minute she'll be like, I want water. <laughs> so that's how we know, yeah, this girl is going down with something. So a, she will drink water and that helps her to bounce back. Another thing we do with fever, um, if she's getting to a point where she's not comfortable, is wet cloth. We will put wet cloth on her head, on her back, and it will kind of like make her feel good and all that. And within 24 hours, her fever breaks. Most of the time, the longest her fever has gone uh, was... Her, the longest her fever has gone was like two days and even that it was going down it was going down it wasn't like at a high place and then it was changing it was going down gradually and so fevers once again you want to leave them alone um the problem with using fever fever reduces it's not just about the fact that you are suppressing the body's healing it's also the fact that Parents are not taught the correct dosage and Tylenol or anything that contains acetaminophen, is that the word? <laughs> acetaminophen. Uh, so anything that contains that, we know that it has an impact on the liver and growing up, oh, our parents had these paracetamol syrups in our basket as children, like every cry they'll give to the baby or something like that. And you can, you know, nowadays that there has been a lot of um, liver failures in Ghana and Nigeria. And one of the reasons is that is the over the counter drugs that we take. A lot of them has acetaminophen and just 
drug abuse in general because a lot of drugs had are really hard on the organs not just um the acetaminophen a lot of drugs are hard on the organ so yeah that's that about fever am i forgetting anything about fever so there are a lot of things you can do with fever if you want to bring it down and one of another method is the wet sock method it also helps to bring down fever another thing you can do is peppermint oil I use essential oils a lot if there's something going on in my home um, it's my go-to to support the body one thing you have to know is that when you are sick there's nothing that is going to cure you the body self self heals you have to support the body that's why food is important food is the number one way that you're going to make your body ready to to fight anything um, whatever you put in your body is going to make sure that your detox pathways are in a position where it can detox so when we put too much junk and nowadays we know um, what uh, we eat is not only through the mouth things we put on our body um, things we spray in our homes things we clean with when I was changing our health um, excuse me when I was changing um, when I was trying to change the way we were living, one of the, the first things I did was changing our cleaning products and toiletries. My one stop shop um, to get essential oils is Young Living. And if you want me to help you to order, I will be happy to help you to order essential oils. And I'll be happy to also teach you all the things you can do with those essential oils. I don't recommend abusing all these things that I'm going to teach you here because they are still uh, in a way medications that are really potent and so you don't want to abuse them you don't want to just wake up every day and then you are busting in lemon I won't advise that yes I sell them and I want to make money but I won't advise that use them of course if you want fragrance it's better to use essential oils than use those um, cancer causing perfumes there is a research that recently came out that lemon essential oil well this thing <laughs> it's not going to <laughs> I wanted it to focus left but the next thing that I want to talk about is earache we do know that it's been said over and over research <laughs> the American um, Academy of Pediatrics they've said it as well that ear aches are self limiting but we still walk into the doctor's office and they, what do they prescribe antibiotics Anti <laughs> antibiotics are no joke when I move here to the States I realized that they don't even abuse drugs as we do back home and that is a little mind-boggling to me because we import these things from these people and they, they they actually sometimes follow procedure like I said when it comes to Tylenol they actually say hey you need to use proper dosage and they, there's some kind of information out there about these things being dangerous as well um, even though we we know they can save lives that they are also dangerous but back home we walk into a chemist and then they give us all these pills and it's one of the things that is weakening us <laughs> you have to allow the body to heal that way the body come across something again it's able to self-heal so with earache what I, I recommend because you are a mother a father caretaker you see that child child miserable you don't just want to watch you feel like you need to help the child so for earache I do I do recommend um, this the garlic the garlic um, oil you can make garlic oil at home if you are that person who likes to make things from scratch it, it just make sure that everything is well um, you know you are not introducing something into the ear make sure that you clean everything properly when you are you are you are, you are doing that pro the process some things that I also recommend having on hand just for general immune um, immunity fortifying your child's immunity is um, these um, let me show you this is my favorite this earthly this thing is not forecasting the way I want it to but this is earthly and it's where you can get something that will help you with cough something that will help with breathing respiration lung and so it's a set and you can get that on earthly's website 
if they ask you who sent you tell them it's me <laughs> so um i do earn something if you buy and then you mention that i'm the one who sent you and then if you can't buy from the Ethereum website or you can't wait this one you get it directly in any health food store I like to give people options you don't have to buy from earthly this is a company that I think is good as well when Isabel was really really young I used these um, it's the same company that has the garlic oil that I showed you and so this is called immune Avenger they also have immune fortifier you can buy online as well and you can get this I got from Whole Foods it's been here for a while this one you can see it's not even opened I, ha I just had it on hand and another place that you can get essential oils if you don't want to get through Young Living I've used them before and they are good the good thing about Young Living is that um, at some point you get free products and you can also earn money if you introduce someone that's why I like them I like free things <laughs> And if you don't want to buy from there, you can buy from Plant Therapy. I love the Plant Therapy, they are Rosalina. Do I have it here? Yeah, this one I got from Plant Therapy. If you feel like something is coming on and you diffuse this in your house, it helps. But lemon, you can't go wrong with lemon. For the kids, my favorite essential oils are frankincense, lavender, lemon. And for sleep, so sometimes when a child is going through all that, then they are not able to sleep well. Chamomile tea. I think that's why a lot of people will go for the Tylenol in their, what's, what's the other one? The cough suppressants because of the way the child is feeling. So chamomile tea is what I will go for in that case. You buy the loose tea, you make some tea for them, they will have a good sleep. If the child is, you feel like there's a lung, something going on bronchitis or a lung, what I would do is nebulize colloidal silver. So colloidal silver is my go-to to nebulize for any lung issue. This can be used for pink eye as well. Um, it is, it, 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 yeah, so this is what I use. So I just put it in the nebulizer and then I put this. They have one for the mouth as well. I make my own Collider Silver, but you can get you can get this brand online. It used to be at Whole Foods, but during the pandemic, because people recommended it, they removed it from their shelves. I don't know why, but you can still get it online. The brand is Sovereign Silver. So I am going to end here, just because this is becoming too long, so that people are able to watch it easily. And I'll come back again more about like stomach bags, like using activated charcoal, bentonite clay, um, vitamin C, all that. But the one thing I want to leave you with is the basic thing to be healthy is food. Food. Commercial meat is junk nowadays. Unfortunately, some of us cannot help it. It's either you, you don't eat meat anymore or make sure you are getting your meat from a farm you know are not pumping those uh, cows with g hormones, antibiotics that you are going to take. This is why we are getting so sick. We take antibiotics when we get sick. And the foods we are eating are also <laughs> giving us more hard drugs. So, and then um, get into the sun, vitamin D, get into the sun. Create opportunities for the children to go out there and have fun in the sun.